and and we're live, and we're live for episode fourteen of Slap Happy. We're here. We're doing it. I'm home. I'm home, baby. It's good to be home. Uh, came back on Saturday, uh, which is the day before Sunday, clearly. And uh, yeah, it feels good. It feels good to be home. We uh, arrived back in the wood, a.k.a. Collingwood, a.k.a. up the Maggie's, uh, around about, you know, 3, 4 p.m. on the, um, on the Saturday. And, uh, yeah, it just feels good walking around a neighborhood, you know, get to see my, my boy Abdul the barber. What's up, Abdul? Get my fresh fade, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, just good to be home. It's good to be, uh, I, I love this place. I genuinely love this place. So, yeah, nice to be back here. Uh, honestly, when we are coming across the border, I thought we were going to have to do a little bit of Mission Impossible, uh, you know, escape scenario because, like, as we're lining up, you know, I see the coppers. I felt like I was going into a music festival. I felt like, um, you know, as you're filing into a music festival, you're seeing all the oppa, 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 oppa days, oppa, you know, oppas and... and uh, um. And the og days and it, it it ish like that, and you're walking in there and you're like, holy shit, this is this is some genuinely serious stuff. Like these people mean business. Uh, like uh, I remember walking into uh, DefCon One for the first time, and uh, that shit was dead set wild. I thought I was walking into a war zone. There were that many cops and um and dogs. Uh, at the entrance. So yeah, they get pretty hectic and I kind of felt like coming into Victoria from New South Wales was somewhat similar. You know, I thought it's about to get real. You know, I'm out, I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, sneak into one of these garbage trucks to make my way across the border or some shit like that. Uh, but no, they just kind of, you know, wind the window down, uh, you know, license and, you know, exemption or permit pass and had a quick look and off we went. And it was uh, a lot easier than expected. Uh, and probably not worth the bloody fucking three COVID tests I had in the space of nine days, um, to, to justify it all, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I'm here. I'm in the wood. This is my office. This is my humble office. That's where I do my trading. Over here is where I make my music, do my recording. And, uh, it feels very, very, very good to be here. So... I want to apologize firstly for last week's episode. I uh, I was recording. I actually recorded it twice and the video dropped out the first time. I got like, I finished it and I was like, oh my God. Okay. Then I went to do it again. And when, the, when I realized that the video wasn't recording the second time, I thought, fuck it. I'm just going to upload the audio because it, it was just too much effort at that point. So I've made a few adjustments. I've got the... The, the front-facing camera, um, uh, the, the the selfie camera, I guess you'd call it, uh, working now. And uh, yeah, so far so good. We're three minutes in and it hasn't stopped recording. So that means hopefully y'all get to see my pretty face this week. And I got my fresh fade and everything. So it's it's all good. Um, yeah, so apologies for the, for the tech issue last week. Um, before I jump into this week's content, if you, has, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do it right now. There's a lot of people watching these videos. They aren't subbed yet. I'm really going to make a push for this YouTube thing this year. Get lots of good content up. Uh, get lots of good interviews up. This week, I'm going to be starting my uh, YouTube weekly trading reviews, I guess, or recaps where I kind of sit down and I talk about some of the stuff I've done this week. Um, I'm going to be going live on YouTube on Friday to start that. This week's one is not going to be too high tech. I'm literally just going to talk through my trade, some of the things I did, some of the things I thought, and it's going to be a place where you guys can ask me questions about the trades that I have and haven't taken and what I thought about certain things, right? So I'm going to be doing that this Friday. Just talk about the week that was really from a trading point of view, being a day trader, right? Um, and then, and then uh, I'm also going to be launching... And uh, Instagram page to go with uh, Slap Happy, which will have like more micro content on it. Uh, and it'll just be a place where you can kind of hang out and just see certain things that I'm thinking or have thought or like or whatever. But yeah, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please, 
please do it. Just jump on there. Or uh, if you're listening to this on uh, any podcasting app, especially Apple Podcasts, please just give it a sub. And um, yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the news. All right, so this is, this week's episode, uh, I've just started reading this book. It's called Limitless. It's by Jim Quick. Uh, I'm only like maybe halfway through it. But this week, I wanted to talk about this idea of unlimiting myself and freeing myself of of uh, a bunch of these like limiting beliefs, you you call them, that have kind of, uh, I guess, restricted me over the last, you know, 12 years. And, you know, I'm only, yeah, probably a third of the way through the book, but it's just like packed with, I, I, I don't think the practical application of some of the stuff that I've read so far is like, you know, it's not like, you know, some books you kind of read and there's like literal tools to use on a day-to-day basis. I don't think this book is that to me so far. I think this book to me so far is more about the mind frame, like getting me getting me to think things that I've never thought, be thought before and getting me to think in a way that I've never thought before. So yeah, so far it's been great for that. Like, you know, just as an example, um, not turning to Google as much or not turning to my phone as much to remember things uh, has been really fun for me. And, and I think is really starting to get my brain kind of like chugging along a, a little quicker. Yeah, I just think my, my you know, obviously the power of recall for stuff that you don't really care about is, you know, I get I get not really needing it and turning to a device for stuff like that. But I, I don't know, I just kind of, I miss using my brain a bit more and I want to start to use my brain a bit more. And uh, that's just one little thing that I'm doing on a on a daily basis to to kind of try to restart the engine uh, instead of relying on on my phone. So yeah, just, and it's just stuff that, you know, like if it was a name of someone that I had been told earlier that day or like a, a, a YouTube channel that I needed to check out, j- instead of just going straight to my phone, just, you know, just sitting there and really trying to sift through the files in my, in my head until I kind of get to the right one. So that's one I've been doing. The other one is like the question of, Am I a genius or could I be a genius? I've never thought that before. I never thought, uh, in fact, I have thought, like, I mean, I guess I thought, like, egotistically, I was kind of smart. Um, but that was more from a point of view of, like, the potential to be smart. Not from, like, actually putting in the work and, and, and really, you know, allowing yourself to flex your brain muscle. So, uh, more recently, or you know, only only from the other day since I fucking read the book, um, I started thinking about that. You know, can I be really smart, or can I be a genius? And you know, it's just something that I never thought before. I never thought, and I don't know, like necessarily whether it's going to equal genius, but anything that I think can get me thinking a different way than what I've been programmed to think uh, is a positive thing. I think anything that is kind of like, you know, ripping the, the, you know, the unwanted bits of like uh, tissue or kind of like uh, garbage away from, you know, the periphery of my brain that's allowing me to kind of think in a certain way, I think is a good thing. So, yeah, asking those bigger questions has been fun so far and um, don't have answers yet. Might not be a genius, might be a genius. Who fucking knows? But I'll find out, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm intending to find out. So um, this quote that I kind of I, I, I like out of the book, this is like one of the first things that I kind of read in the book that really like hit me and I was like, oh shit, this like really resonates with me. It goes, the ultimate adventure we're all on is to realize and reveal our potential while inspiring others to do the same. Uh, paraphrasing a little bit, but yeah, essentially uh, realizing your potential, revealing your own potential revealing your own potential and then uh, inspiring other people to reach theirs. And I think this is something that I have all, has always um, appealed to me, this idea of being a leader amongst men, being someone that someone looks up, being someone that people look up to and turn to as like, you know what, fucking good on you for like never giving up and, and being resilient and, and rising above, you know. I've always wanted to be that, but I've never done the work to be that. Um. But this this quote, re- yeah, just really resonated me, res- really resonated with me because that's who I see myself as. I haven't done the work to get there, admittedly, 
And so that's going to be on me. But I've, I've always wanted to and kind of always have seen myself as this person who can be a person that people look to as uh, inspiring, you know? Um, and, you know, I think that's a great, great gift to be able to inspire, to be able to push people to reach their best, I think is an incredibly great gift and even a superpower. And it's if I can achieve that in my life, you know, pushing people to reach their potential, to break free of their, you know, self-doubt and their, their, their negative self-talk. If I can push people to do that, then fuck, I've lived a good life. And uh, I will be incredibly happy when I get to kind of take my last couple of breaths. Um, yeah. And then uh, here we go. No problem. So this is um, Einstein, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, he talks about this quote was like one of the catalysts to his like... Uh, brain revolution and you know it's an einstein quote but i I fucking love this no problem can be solved from the same same level of consciousness that it was created from and i think this year i kind of count it i I kind of i kind of intuitively knew that this year had to be the year that i changed stuff dramatically because in previous years right my uh my same level of consciousness my same level of thinking has provided me with a similar set of results, right? Every year in terms of my output and my uh, real clear direction and focus on the things that really matter. So this year, I knew that um, as I quoted a couple of weeks ago with the Thomas Jefferson quote, like to go where you've never gone, you must do what you've never done. I really felt like this year, I had to do stuff that I've never done before. Giving up drinking and alcohol, giving up drugs. Sorry, drinking and alcohol is the same fucking thing. Oh, you you can drink a bunch of other shit. You can drink milk. You can drink warm milk and cold milk and and water, Gatorade, uh, urine, Todd Carney, shout out. You can drink tea, uh, chamomile, herbed, uh, gray, Earl Grey. What the fuck's up with tea, by the way? You know, like when I go, when I get, when I'm at my nan's place, like for example, I went to my nan's place when I was up on the central coast, right? I said to my nan, nan, I just want some tea, some normal ass tea. She's like, oh, well, you got the Earl Grey, you got the... Duh, duh. And she started rattling off all these names. I'm like, woman, I just need a tea. I need a goddamn normal ass, gr- like b- black ass, uh, w- you know, with milk ass, some, some sugar ass having tea. That's all I need. Okay, I don't need all this other shit. <sighs> anyway, yeah, she ended up giving me some fucking raspberry shit and we tried to put some milk in it and it just got all clunky. And it just wasn't a fun experience. But I, I like tea. Anyway, you can drink tea. You can drink a bunch of stuff. What was I talking about? Um, yeah, so I knew that uh, this year I needed to do something that I've never done before. That is to give up drinking, give up... Almost said alcohol again. <laughs> give up drinking, give up drugs, give up gambling. Okay? Those are the things that I absolutely need to give up if I am to do something that I've never done before. And I think that is this quote, right? Same level of consciousness that created the problem, you cannot solve it from. So to to reach a higher level of consciousness this year, um, I, I need to um, think differently and, and you know get to a, get to a different place in order to, to solve the problems that I've got, which is um, you know, I'll, I'll get to at some point in the future. So yeah, and 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 on that point, uh a guy named Patrick Bed David who runs a channel called Valuetainment on YouTube. It's the number one entrepreneur YouTube channel. Uh, I love his content. I love what he does. Uh, he also has a book out called Your Next Five Moves, How to Think Like a Grandmaster, which I just read and fucking love. Um, I love everything that Patrick Bed David does. Anyway, he just put out a little video, just him like, you know, selfie mode kind of thing, um, talking about how it's time to cut the fat, time to cut the fat. And I love this because, uh, you know, Patrick Bed David. If you look at him, he's fit, he's healthy, he's rich, he's in- intelligent, he's funny. Uh, he's got a lot of good stuff going on, and he puts it down to the fact that 17 years ago he gave up partying, he gave up alcohol, and he like just zeroed in on you know being a successful entrepreneur. And now, 17 years later, he is, and uh, he's a very, very, very successful man, very, very, very intelligent man, and. Um, yeah, I kind of, I, I, I love everything that he does. So when he talked about this cutting the fat idea, really resonated with me, of course, because that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. I'm trying to cut the fat. 
um, in, in as many ways as possible in order to reach that higher level of consciousness and start solving these goddamn problems. So yeah, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was beautiful. And, uh, yeah. Um, also this, uh, section about Jim Carrey that he talks about in the book in, 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 um, Limitless, where he talks about, um, Jim and, uh, you know, his mission in life is, um, kind of to free people from concern. You know, the way that Jim Carrey behaves, his energy, his comedy is all pointed to this idea of freeing people from their concerns. And, and I totally love that. Like, um, you know, I think that's a great gift as well. That's a superpower. Like so many people are in their heads like all day, every day. What are, the, what are these people going to think? What are these people going to think? You know, will I impress this guy? Will I impress this girl? So much of our lives is dictated and governed by uh, these concerns. And it kind of literally chokes us up on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes, you know. And um, I think, you know, that's one of Jim Carrey's great gifts, like making people laugh, making them free up, making them, you know, probably feel a bit more comfortable because you're never going to be as weird as him. You're never going to be weirder than that guy. The guy that's, you know, the guy that was dumb and dumber, the guy that was Ace Ventura, you're never going to be weirder than him. So if you're a bit weird, you're going to feel comfortable in your skin, right? If, if Jim Carrey is fucking here, you know, you're never going to get there. You're always going to be here. So all of a sudden, if, you're, if you were this in the room, right, and then Jim Carrey goes like that, you're going to feel comfortable all of a sudden. And I think freeing people of their kind of like their, their self-doubt and their inhibitions is a beautiful gift, beautiful superpower. I don't necessarily feel like that that's mine, but I think definitely freeing people of their negative self-talk and, and, and the battles that they have within, I feel like could be mine. Um, and just saying, hey, that motherfucker is wrong, right? That negative, that dude inside you, that dude is wrong, okay? He might try to tell you a whole bunch of shit as to why he's right and et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, he doesn't know shit. So, yeah, I just think that that the section around Jim Carrey and just what his kind of life's mission is and, you know, um, yeah, I think was beautiful. Um, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it goes on to this little section where it talks about genius and uh, how it's not um, born, it's, um, oh, well, genius is not born, it's made through practice, and then it, you know, started talking about different types of geniuses, and, and it got me thinking about, you know, could I be a genius? I've never, ever, ever thought that before until I read this book, and now I'm starting to think, hey, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I'm a goddamn genius. I'm not really thinking that, but, like, just, just the idea of it is, is, uh, thrilling to me. It makes me think, like, Maybe I could be. I probably am not because it's fucking hard to be a genius. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort over a really long time to be a genius. But maybe I could be a genius. And just that thought alone makes me so much more, I don't know, it empowers me. It empowers me to think that I never thought I could be, so what's the point of trying? Now that I think that I might be, even if it's a 1% chance, at least I can fucking have a crack now, you know? And what's better than having a crack? You know, what's better than trying something? You know, at, at least you're going to, if you're going to die, you're going to die on, on your feet rather than on your knees, right? Die living on my feet rather than kneeling. Um, I'd rather die standing than live on my knees. That's the quote. I don't know. Something like that. But I fucking saw it somewhere and it's great. Um, yeah, so it talks about these limiting beliefs, limiting, uh, you know, and what's limiting you, all that kind of Jazz, I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not real adept in the um the limiting beliefs space. But I did write a little list of things that I think are limiting me. Some of them are beliefs. Some of them are you know behaviors. And um yeah, I wrote a little list of it here, which I am going to read and um maybe discuss. But here we go. These are my list of or what is limiting me. My perfectionism. Uh, the need to be right. Um, resistance in all of its forms, especially to sitting down and doing the goddamn work. Self-awareness slash not being tuned into what I'm really feeling. Uh, needing to be liked. I struggle with this a little bit. Like I kind of, I like being the funny, interesting guy in a room because it makes me, gives me a little dopamine hit, right? I get a little, ooh, I feel warm. I feel like, oh, you know, oh, you think I'm special? Oh, you think I'm funny? You think I'm interesting? Ah, oh, thank you so much. You know, like that, that feels good. So, um, 
I recognize that in me, that, that I need to be liked. And um, uh, it's counterintuitive to what the professional is. The professional doesn't care whether they're liked. They only care about getting the work done. And um, I want to be a professional. I don't want to be an amateur. I don't want to be someone that just needs to be liked. I want to be someone that just does the work uh, and puts it out regardless of what people think, you know. Um, taking things too personally slash being reactive. Uh, getting better at this, still struggling with this. You know, there is a little bit of like, you know, needing that, that need to be liked. And then, you know, if people kind of like um, say something that even is remotely kind of a, a close to a put down or, or negative or, you know, is a, is a character attack, you know, I can take that stuff to heart pretty quickly. So um, being too reactive, you know, I think is limiting me. Yeah, 100%. Um, and the belief that I am average in my brain function and physical capacity. So this is a big one, I think. I think I've always kind of thought, you know, I'm just an average intelligence. I'm just of average, I'm just of average, uh, you know, physique. Uh, and to be fair, I am those things because of the work that I've done, but they are not my limit. They are not my capability. They are just what I am as a result of the work that I have or haven't done, right? So, yeah, believe, like being them and believing that I am them are two different things. I am of average physique because I have not done the work yet, right? But believing that I am only of average physique means that I probably am never going to push past that point. Now, I'm starting to think, you know, I've kind of been going to the gym a little bit lately. I've been looking after my health a bit more than I ever have. I'm starting to see some definition. I'm starting to see like some of the belly fat disappear. And now I'm starting to think, holy shit, okay, maybe a boy could be jacked. You know, maybe I could be a, a modern day Ruku, which is my little brother, which, who's incredibly jacked. Um, you know, maybe I could be a modern day Terry Crews. Ba, 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 ba. That was me doing my pep dance. Um, yeah. Um, you know, maybe I could be bigger than I ever thought I could be. Uh, maybe I could be super smart. Only I can, you know, really make the difference between what I might be and what I am going to be. But, you know, the, the fact remains, like, just thinking about the possibilities is exciting and is really opening me up to what if, you know, what if. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things that are limiting me. I think the perfectionism one is one that I'm kind of like getting away from last year. I don't know if I spoke about this on a previous podcast, but last year I managed to use the same notepad for the entire year, which is something that I really struggled with in the past. I used to like, you know, get three or four pages into note taking, realize it was a bit messy and kind of like start again, start again. I'd have all these notepads stacked up. Um, so getting better at that, you know, sticking with one notepad, sticking with one thing, you know, realizing that not everything has to be perfect, um, you know, is one thing that I am working on. And then um, th I think the other real big one is resistance in all of its forms, especially to sitting down and doing the work. Um, I don't have a problem with songwriting. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with um, writing music, um, recording music. I have a problem with sitting down. There is resistance because the work that is required when I sit down is important to me. My music is important to me. So th there is, there is, because I haven't like formed a really strong habit yet, because I'm not a professional yet in the way that I think about it and approach it, there is still some resistance there. So I'm really fighting against that at the moment and I'm working really hard to um, overcome that. So yeah, we'll see in time whether or not that plays out. Anyway, um, yeah, could I be a genius? So that's uh that's my little wrap up on unlimiting myself, uh, limitless by Jim Quick. Uh, only one third of the way through. I might, you know, depending on what I uncover in the next two thirds, I might I might drop another little podcast here. But um, yeah, I'll probably wrap it up here for that one. This has been really interesting for me, really fun for me. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you got any questions or you know, you have any thoughts about what I just said or you know, you, you, you at home kind of like have some ideas about what's limiting you, drop them down in the comments below. And uh, I'd like to see what 
uh, things other people are, you know, battling with or struggling with that are kind of unlimiting, oh, sorry, limiting them. And um, yeah, that'd be interesting to kind of get a conversation going down there. Anyway, that's the end of episode 14. Um, don't know what I'm going to call this one, but I'll figure it out because I could potentially be a goddamn genius. Thank you very much for listening, guys. My name is Civilian. This is the end of Slap Happy. And uh, I'll see you next time. Yeah.